Hello again fellow YouTubers. What I've got for you tonight is another old computer project video. I had somebody leave a comment on one of my videos recently saying that although I'd done a good job cleaning up that smoke-filled computer, it was effectively a worthless machine. Well, you know what? I beg to differ. Any computer that you can use to do something is still useful. And what I have here from 1996 or 7 is an HP Vectra VA Pentium Pro clocked at a blistering 200 megahertz and what I'm doing with it is I'm going to make it into a network attached storage appliance. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using the free BSD based network operating system a variant known as free NAS for free network attached storage. I suppose you could pronounce it free NAS if you wanted to. I've already done this on this machine to confirm that it would in fact work using this high-tech 2.1 gigabyte Seagate hard drive spinning at a blistering 4500 RPM and most assuredly multimedia ready but hey if it works and it's paid for and it was both it worked well enough for a test and then for storage when I was testing this thing out I put a serial ATA controller in here this is probably the only Pentium Pro in the world that's got a serial ATA controller in it and I'm probably one of the few people in the world who has ever put a serial ATA controller board in this thing, in a Pentium Pro. I also had a USB card. It took me a while to find one that worked. If you try this yourself, I strongly recommend that you get one with an NEC USB 2.0 chipset, because the chipsets from VIA and Acer Labs had different but interesting problems. The video card really doesn't matter. I've just put a low-end S3 board in there because there's not even going to be a monitor hooked up to this most of the time. The network card, well, this thing could probably never really make use of a gigabit network connection, but the gigabit card was about 20 bucks. At that price, I couldn't say no, especially since the hundreds weren't that much cheaper. This duct tape covers up a serial ATA port that is actually an internal serial ATA port broken out on the back of the serial ATA controller card. It's ganged internally with this internal serial ATA connector, so I covered it up because it's really an internal connector, not an exter external connector for serial ATA, and I put a real external connector into place. Now the big change that I want to make to this, I actually had this machine up and running, but there were a couple changes I wanted to make to it. One of the changes I wanted to make to it, instead of using an old hard drive, even if it works, you never know when it's going to die, I decided I would go to using a compact flash card as a uh, boot source for the free network attached storage operating system. To do that, you need this kind of an adapter card that takes a CF card and connects it electrically to the computer's IDE drive bus. That's what this card does. And then for storage, I decided to use this Samsung EcoGreen HD502HI 500 gigabyte serial ATA hard drive. So those are the two things that I'm going to put into this machine. Now I've actually had to do some modifications to this machine, or rather I chose to do some modifications. The old HP supplied cooling fan in the back was broken, so I replaced it with a new one and just hooked that into a power supply connector. I had this big spare fan that I received with another computer case and didn't need for that application that I put down here to blow a little more cooling air through this old power supply and also to get some air moving over the internal hard drives because the fan in the power supply works but it doesn't move a lot of air. I also needed some serial ATA power connectors for a serial ATA hard drive. I got those off of a dead power supply and grafted them into that connector up there. I also grafted a three and a half inch floppy power connector because this CF to IDE adapter needs to have power in order to do its thing. So now let's put this hard drive and stuff in here. Alright, now it's time to see about a smoke test. Just a real quick and dirty check here on the kitchen table to see if this thing is basically happy. Now I know it's going to uh, issue a beep error code about not having a monitor hooked up. But other than that, there's some activity lights on that CF to IDE adapter. I'd expect them to come on. I'm going to turn that fan speed down to low down there to see if I can hear that newly installed hard drive spin up. So 
remove this chair here, hit the power button, look at that. Yep, that hard drive is spinning up. I heard it go in there. There's the video beep codes. But those will go away when I hook a monitor up to it. And I actually intend to make a video terminator plug so as to fool it into thinking that it's got a monitor attached. Now, for those of you who are still wondering about the possible practical uses of this, which I'll get to in part two as I'm still waiting to receive a couple of things like a UPS battery for the uninterruptible power supply I want to hook up to this thing, I pitted this thing against an Apple time capsule. I've used two Apple time capsules, one of which has failed. And the Apple time capsules have not had a particularly happy history with me. There's the case cover for it right there. Anyway, the Apple time capsules have not had a real happy history with me. One of them died, and both of them have really been nothing but trouble. And of course it's making the news again right now that even more of them are dying usually with power supply problems. Well, the latest nightly builds of the free network attached storage operating system actually have the ability to advertise themselves as appearing to be an Apple time capsule device. So I set this machine up to do it while it was still booting from that old hard drive and using a USB attached hard drive as storage. And this thing, even though it doesn't have the processor power that the time capsule does, and it only has slightly more random access memory installed. I've got it maxed out at 192 megabytes in SIMS no less. This thing soundly beat the time capsule in terms of reliability and backup speed coming from several different Macintosh computers at once. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to use this as a time capsule destination for Macintosh backups and I'm also going to use it to store backups of my other computers, the Windows machines, the OS2 machines, and the Unix Linux machines. So there you have it, another way to repurpose an old and forgotten computer.